Good afternoon and welcome to the wedding of Megan Andrews and Spencer Gillio. Thank you all for being here today to celebrate the couple. To ensure everyone can enjoy the ceremony without distractions, Megan and Spencer have hired a wonderful photographer to capture these precious memories. <laughs> They've kindly requested that all phones and cameras be turned off and put away during the ceremony. All right. I'm going to set a scene for you all. Early September 2016. It's move-in weekend at Bryant University, and the freshmen are sitting down in Salmo, the cafeteria, for the first time. Spencer walks in with his friend Owen, and they see a few empty seats at a table of girls. A college freshman's dream, right? <laughs> they sat with them, and Spencer met Megan. Although she insisted on playing hard to get for a few days, Spencer persisted across Snapchat and Instagram for another <laughs> chance to see her. Within days, sorry, within days, they were hanging out until two in the morning, talking and making each other laugh. Three weeks later, they split an Oreo cheesecake at a place that would become one of their college date night staples, the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> at the end of that first semester, not wanting to miss the opportunity before they both left for the holidays, Spencer told Megan that he loved her for the first time. After college, Spencer accepted a position at Traveler's Insurance, which required a move to Knoxville for a year. Megan and Spencer took a trip to the Bahamas and then drove 16 hours from Connecticut to Tennessee, where they spent several days getting him set up in a new city. When Megan went to the airport for her flight home, Spencer, back in his apartment and alone for the first time in almost two weeks, realized she was the one and sent a text about his love for her and their future. Megan, just having boarded her plane, read that text from Spencer and it hit her that he was the one for her too. Megan and Spencer found an apartment together in Connecticut after his year in Knoxville. They navigated the ins and outs of living together and quickly figured out their rhythm. Spencer cooked for them. He makes excellent fajitas. And Megan kept the apartment clean. She takes after her mom with that. They took walks after work to catch up on their days. Megan helped Spencer to be more creative and adventurous and gave, gave him the courage to do hard things. Spencer kept Megan grounded when things would get stressful and pushed her to see her worth and value and advocate for herself in her career. Megan would listen to Spencer's meaningless anecdotes and rambling stories and definitely not make funny faces when he <laughs> lost the plot. <laughs> Spencer learned the right way to fold his clean socks and more facts than he could ever need to know about Taylor Swift. <laughs> and then, a little over a year ago, Spencer planned a date for the two of them to Wickham Park near Hartford. Megan, struck by the pretty scenery there, suggested that they take a selfie. Spencer began to give his big speech about love and their relationship. Then, he dropped to one knee, catching her by surprise, and here we are today. <laughs> There's a big bug. <laughs> Marriage is a partnership, a friendship. It's a lifelong commitment to stand by your other half in good times and in bad, to be there to give support. Marriage is never 50-50. Sometimes it's 80-20 or 60-40 because you take turns carrying the weight for each other and alternating that balance. Marriage is looking at the person in front of you and knowing that they are your sunshine. It's true, unconditional love and trust. That love presents itself in big ways, valuing your partner's happiness and needs as much as your own, being there for one another in life's big, exciting moments, and in those times when you, need, when you just need someone to lean your head on. <laughs> it can also be seen in small gestures, making them a homemade card, or sharing a little bit of your plate because the food is just that good. <laughs> to paraphrase the groom's words, love is whatever Megan and Spencer have. They care about each other. 
They always put the other first. They just get each other. They're a team, and they push each other to be the best versions of themselves. And that is why today, Spencer and Megan will become husband and wife. I would now like to invite Lisa, the mother of the groom, up to read from the Book of Corinthians. What? To Spencer and Megan, a reading from the Act of the Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. I still remember that day that Spencer called from Brian and sarcastically said, I'm not in a serious relationship. <laughs> that was eight years ago, and now look at where the two of you are. Marriage can sometimes be hard, but remember the strength of your love, and you can overcome anything. Remember to be patient with each other, to always be kind, and to communicate. Always show your appreciation to each other and all that you both bring to your marriage. Remember the simple things that matter, to say good morning, to say good night, to hold hands, and to hold each other close. You are a loving, fun, and beautiful couple. I feel so blessed that our families are connected. May you continue to grow in love and happiness. I love you both. Yeah. Love you, Mom. Love you. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I'd, love, I'd now like to invite Courtney, mother of the bride, to read Blessing for a Marriage by James Dillett Freeman. Hello, everybody. Um, this is A Blessing for a Marriage by James Dillett Freeman. May your marriage bring you all the ex exquisite excitements a marriage should bring. And may life grant you also patience, tolerance, and understanding. May you always need one another, but not so much to fill your emptiness as to help you to know your fullness. A mountain needs a valley to be complete. The valley does not make the mountain less, but more. And the valley is more a valley because it has a mountain towering over it. So let it be with the both of you. May you need one another, but not out of weakness. May you want one another, but not out of lack. May you entice one another, but not compel one another. I don't know what that means. But. <laughs> May you embrace one another, but not out encircle one another. I think I know what that one means either. And not fail in the little graces. I had to get funny. May you look for things to praise, often say I love you, and take no notice of small faults. I never do that. If you have quarrels that push you apart, may both of you hope to have good sense enough to take the first step back. Sometimes. May you enter into the mystery, which is the awareness of one another's presence, no more physical than spiritual, warm and near when you are side by side. May you have happiness, and may you find it making one another happy, and may you have love, and may you have it find it, find it loving one another. I love you both. I am the luckiest mom, the proudest mom ever. And keep being magical. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> the vows you exchange today are promises you make to one another. Please exchange the vows you have written for each other. So he's talking to the mic. <laughs> to my lovely, beautiful, soon-to-be wife, Megan, I'm so lucky to be standing next to you today after all the memories we've made together over the past seven years. I knew you were the one for me when I moved a thousand miles away, and I realized how much life was better with you by my side. You've always been my number one fan, 
Whether it's cheering me on and taking pictures of my games or supporting me when I'm faced with any challenge. You set me up for success in all areas of life because I know you'll always have my back. I'm so grateful to have someone that gives me so much patience and always lets me be myself. I love your passionate spirit, your caring heart, and your smile that's both comforting and contagious. You are my sunshine, you help me through all my toughest decisions, and you always give me a listening ear when I need it. Most importantly, you inspire me to be a better man. Every single day, you give me another reason to love you. And for all those reasons, I promise to always be there for you, no matter what comes our way. I promise to be the best husband I can be. And I promise to love you unconditionally as my wife forever and always. Okay. To, to Spencer. <laughs> I wanted to take a moment to reflect on our love the last seven years. Not many people can say they fell in love with their husband at 18, but I'm so happy I'm one of them. With only a few days of knowing you, I was hooked. You were the easiest person to talk to for hours, to laugh with, and to make me feel at home. Over the last seven years, we've learned together and grown as individuals and as partners. I love sharing my life with you, waking up and falling asleep with you by my side, taking walks and talking about our days, and of course, watching the Food Network. <laughs> Your drive and ambition never ceases to amaze me, and I'm so lucky to have a man as great as you. In April, when I was on a work trip in Nashville, the Uber driver told me the key to marriage was loving your partner in the Monday, day-to-day -day life. Well, I'm here to say, I love going to Big Y with you, even when you browse the aisles and debate which products to buy. After a long weekend or day, we'll lay in bed and Spencer will ask, what were your top three things? And I can't wait to hear what today's are, but I know mine will be this moment saying I do and becoming your wife. As your wife, I promise to love you with everything I am, to always love and support you, and to always stand by your side. I love you with my whole heart. Do you, Spencer, take Megan to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better and for worse, for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, as long as you both shall live? I do. <laughs> and do you, Megan, take Spencer to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better and for worse, for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, as long as you both shall live. I do. <laughs> Wedding rings are often emphasized as being a perfect circle, symbolizing love by having no beginning and no end. But in a practical sense, these rings do have a beginning. Ancient rock was dug from the earth, metal was extracted and melted down, and then forged, shaped, and polished. Something beautiful came out of the raw elements and the work put into them, much like Megan and Spencer's relationship. What started freshman year at Bryant has brought them to this wedding day. That is what these rings represent. <laughs> Matt, do you have the rings? Yes. <laughs> exchange the rings. Which hand? Is it my left hand? <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. Isn't it on your left hand? Oh, right. See, that's what I put out. <laughs> she told me no. I was right. All right. <laughs> and now, in front of your family and friends, 
and by the power vested in me by the state of Connecticut, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Let's just run, girl. 